Ladies and gentlemen, it is not every day that one got to play the ultimate boss of chess, the greatest chess player of all time, the man himself, Magnus Carlsen. That is what happened today in eighth round of Title Tuesday tournament on chess.com. I had six points out of seven games. He had five and a half out of seven. And uh, let's see what happened. Boy, this is a testament. He is human. He bleeds. <laughs> All right. After the game, I will show what were some of the critical moments of the game. I hope you enjoy. Hey, let's go. Let's go, Maxi. Let's go, Maxi. Okay. Got to play here with white. Um, hmm. Let's go closest away. for that night.
Just anyways. Man. We are so close. So close. So close yet so far. Come on. Come on, look at this position. Being two pounds up? Come on, bro. Knight d2. Oh my god. Knight d2 and take on e4 with the knight, bro. Alright, alright. Things were not as easy as I made it sound in the post game commentary. But uh, let's see what happened. I started the game with knight f3, my favorite ready opening. He chooses to answer it with the symmetrical English c5 slash uh, Sicilian defense type of uh, pawn structure. And after knight c6, I decided to go for the closed Sicilian with the e4. h3 is aimed to stop bishop g4. I didn't want uh, left to trade for my knight, which would be supporting the d4 square. Rook e1 to defend the pawn on e4. And then I decided to go c3, d4. Main move here is e5 to counter the d4, but he decided to play knight d7 and let me take control of the center, which I was very happy about. E5, now the long diagonal here is looking very appetizing for white. Knight b6, and after knight g5, I was already getting a little tingly, not gonna lie. Uh, I figured this should be good for me. E6, and after f5, knight f7 gives white a lot of activity. Queen moves to c8, and man, I should have gone immediately bishop h6. Um, I don't know why I took on c5 first and then decided to go bishop h6. Uh, Opening up the file here should definitely favor black, especially considering I could have played d5 uh, when my pawn is on d4 in case they try to attack my uh, e6 pawn. So not going immediately bishop h6 uh, and taking on c5 is a little inexplainable, but uh, white is still very good here. And after knight d8, I was very proud of this move, knight to d6. And the point is, if uh, pawn captures back on d6, I have e7, and um, I'm promoting with the capture and check, or without the capture. Now, if rook e8, I take on d8, and after rook takes d8, I have this uh, rook e7 check, attacking the bishop on b7 with the uh, fork and winning a lot of material, basically. This would be lights out. So, he moved the queen away, knight takes on b7, queen f3, knight d6 queen e3 now i have this very powerful bishop on the uh, long diagonal he has to block it with knight e4 and after bishop e4 i can take on c5 again attack this two pawns e7 and e4 uh, e queen b7 and knight d2 i wish i didn't rush here i played queen e5 check and after rook f6 i took queen e4 instantly i don't know why i think it was the pressure that oh he has two minutes, I have 30 seconds, I'm getting low on time. Knight d2, man, this was the biggest chance in the game. <laughs> now, I'm threatening to take knight e4. There is one more trick though, after rook d8, I cannot take immediately because there is rook d5 trapping my queen. So I have to find this another precise move, rook a to d1. Which if you see knight e4, rook d5, then it's probably not too difficult to spot. And uh, now white is winning straight up. Because if, um, let's say, rook d5, I'll just take on e4. If not, I'm threatening to take knight e4. So it almost forces black to trade queens here. And then knight e4, rook e6 probably. I simply take on d5, king f1. I secure my rook on e1. Now black has much weaker pawn structure. Mm -hmm. And I'm pawned up on top of everything. And I have only two pawn islands. Uh, so by far, I think this was the biggest chance in the game. All right, I rushed with queen e4 and after rook e4, rook d8 here. Actually, it's not so easy to stop uh, the rook invasion, either d2 or d1. And I decided to do it with knight a3, which is th the wrong way to do it. I should have played rook d4, given up one of the pawns here on e6, and then played king f1 to make sure that this rook does not get active. And then I'm simply going to double up my knight. Um, it's going to be a little tricky still. I have to play probably a position like this and then a3, get rid of this weakness. Still gonna require some technique, but losing this with white is very hard to imagine if time is not an issue down the line. All right, 
and uh, that's kind of what happened here. After rook d2, um, I'm already losing at least one pawn here. That's what happened. I gave up the b2 pawn. Then after knight b1, now my c3 pawn is really weak. Rook comes into the game from the fifth rank, and I could feel it is going away my advantage. But after rook e5, losing this game with up a pawn, knight end game is just not only disappointing but embarrassing i would say just bring the king closer what are you doing with the knight i jumped the pony and after knight d5 here somehow material gets equal but his b pawn is quite dangerous now so i should try to stop it apparently it's still a draw here this was his chance to take on h5 and sacrifice the knight for the path pawns but he doesn't do it Again, he's human. <laughs> and uh, game goes back to equality. I should bring the knight to defend this g for pawn, and then king um, towers the b for pawn. And it should still be a draw, but you can probably see the clock here. I'm playing literally on seconds, not even two seconds, three seconds, just one second. All right, and he did not let easy here and uh, after shuffling a little bit uh, he cut me on the fork even after this it was still a draw but here not capturing the pawn is crazy apparently knight d2 still gives me chances to hold this knight f1 and then there's some crazy line here knight to d4 i don't take immediately because there's knight f5 and g3 i have to play knight e3 and then knight g2 then i'll take this pawn and head back to win the g3 pawn and apparently should still be theoretically drawn but with second on the clock versus opponents and magnus carlsen's one minute this still not going to be easy hold all right i think that overall a very fun experience this was the second encounter with uh, magnus and this time it was much better than the first one are we ever gonna get the chance again like this? Well, we gotta keep grinding, keep getting better and uh, wait for another chance. All right, that is all I had for you today. If you enjoyed this game and you watched it this far and you're not subscribed, what are you doing, bro? All right, I'll see you in the next one.